Okay, so this video is for talking about telescopes and why we generally tend to use reflecting telescopes with mirrors rather than telescopes with lenses, especially for large telescopes. To start with though, we need to understand the basic layout of a telescope and it's a two lens system. You have uh, one lens and a second lens with their principal axes aligned and their focal planes are also in the same plane. So we're gonna look at that in a sec. The first lens is called the objective lens and that's the lens that we point at the object over to the left hand side here and the second lens is called the eyepiece lens and that's unsurprisingly where you put your eye. And the reason I've said these focal planes for each lens are in the same location is that the objective focal length is shown here, the eyepiece focal length is shown here and the two are separated by the sum of those distances. That means that the focal lengths for both lenses, the focal planes for both lenses lie in this plane here in the same place. Okay, if we're gonna get a telescope that works, we need to have an objective focal length that is longer than the eyepiece focal length. We'll see that that goes into what the magnification of the telescope is later, okay? And as you can see on here as well, that assuming we've made these lenses out of the same material, if we think back to the um, the lens video where we talked about the factors that could affect the focal length, we can see we'd expect the objective lens to have a long focal length because it has less curvature, and we'd expect the eyepiece um, lens here to have a short focal length because it has more curvature. So that links back to what we talked about in the lenses video. Okay, well how does it work as a telescope then? Well, the level of detail you really need to know is that arrangement, and you need to be able to calculate magnifications. I'm going to show you how the rays go through a telescope for a forming the image of a star, just so you can see what the magnification actually means. Because what actually ends up happening is the telescope magnifies angles. If two objects it's looking at are separated by a degree, say, and it has uh, an angular magnification of 10, then when you look through the telescope, instead of being separated by a degree, those objects will be separated by 10 degrees. And if an object has a, has a size, a diameter of one degree, right, then if you look through the same telescope, again, its size will now be 10 degrees. It will look bigger in your field of view. That's what the telescope actually does. So here's how it does it. Again, we're just using the, the laws of um, drawing ray diagrams that we looked at before for the lenses. And just like before, we're going to start with the one through the centre of the objective lens that we know, coming from the direction that the star is in, um, will go straight through the objective lens and won't change direction. Okay. Then we need to draw a second ray, and the choice of this one is a bit tricky. We have to draw a second ray that is parallel to the first one, so that we can use the rule that parallel light on one side of the lens will go through the focal same point in the focal plane on the other side. Okay, so looking at the focal plane here, we know that this red one and the orange one are going to intersect. And I've chosen the red ray here so that it also goes through the centre of the eyepiece lens. And we know if it goes through the centre of the eyepiece lens, it will keep going in the same direction. So I've had to, if you were doing that in practice, you would need to sort of put your ruler on the centre of the eyepiece lens. You would need to put it um, at the place where the previous ray had crossed the focal plane. And that would tell you where, um, by just by looking at where your ruler hits the objective lens, that would tell you where you would need to draw your parallel ray to hit, okay? And then the final ray we can draw is one that's kind of the reverse of this red rule for the orange ray. Um, if we know that the light rays have started from the same point in the focal plane of this eyepiece lens, then we know that they will end up parallel on the other side, okay? And there we go. So what we've effectively done is, just like with the single lens, we've formed an image of the star at this point in the focal plane, and then we've actually used the eyepiece lens to look at that image. That's really the way to think about what the telescope does. The objective lens forms an image, and the eyepiece lens then magnifies that image again. So you can also obviously draw any other rays in there again, parallel on, the, on before the objective lens, going through the same point in the focal plane, and then parallel once they come to the eyepiece lens. Um, so what do we mean by magnification for this system? Well, if we're talking about magnification, as I said, we're talking about angular magnification. So the angle that the object is at over here is in this direction, is quite a small angle here. And what you can see has happened, even for this relatively sort of low magnification telescope, is the image angle over here, the angle between the rays and the principal axis on this side, is much larger. Okay, so when your eye looks at this light, it will see it coming from a larger angle than it would do if it was looking directly at it. So that's the magnification part, okay? 
So the, actually the definition of magnification here would be the image angle over the object angle. But what you need to know is the practical, how do we work out the magnification for a telescope? And just by sort of geometry, um, that I'm not going to go into here is it's just the objective focal length divided by the eyepiece focal length. So if we want more magnification from our telescope, we need a longer objective focal length and or a shorter eyepiece focal length. Okay, so that's how the telescope works. The main thing you need to be able to do, though, is sort of calculations related to this. Okay, um, so what we're going to do is look at the magnification uh, equation. I'm going to remove the angle, image angle, object angle part because you don't really need to be able to use that and just look at the uh, magnification formula in on the formula sheet. Okay, so we're going to do several examples um, with a couple of the sort of general tricks thrown in. Um, what's the magnification of a telescope with objective focal length 2 meters and eyepiece focal length 0.1 meters? If you like, you can pause and try and do it and we'll go through them. So I'll just give you a sec to do that now. Okay, so this one's relatively straightforward. It's just put the numbers straight into the formula. Make sure you get them in the right place. Obviously, you're expecting your telescope magnification to be greater than 1. Otherwise, it's not actually magnifying. It would be shrinking the image. It would be making it diminished. So that makes sense. Um, no units for magnification, you might be pleased to know. It's a ratio. It's a ratio of sizes, so it doesn't have a unit. Okay. Example number 2. See if you can spot the trick thrown in here. What's the magnification of a telescope with objective focal length 1.2 meters and total length 1.32 meters? You'll need to think about the arrangement of the lenses in the telescope we saw in the previous diagram. Pause it, have a go, see if you can manage to do this, and then we'll talk about the answer. Okay, so the trick here is we've got the objective focal length, but we haven't been directly told the eyepiece focal length. And what we need to remember is that the eyepiece focal length plus the objective focal length will be the total length of the telescope. So if we want to find out what the eyepiece focal length is, we need to take away the objective focal length from our total length here. Now, this is a nasty trick that they're unlikely to throw at you, but just in case, you've now seen it, so you should be ready. Okay, and then we just put the numbers into the formula again. Um, so there's just a reminder to, to show you the original diagram, that yellow, the yellow circled... Um, information down here that the objective focal length plus the IP focal length is basically going to be the total length of the telescope from one lens to the other. Okay, so that's that little trick. Just be on the lookout just in case they try and throw it at you. And the final um, little trick they can throw at you is the fact that we, we talked about lens power and the fact that lens power was 1 divided by focal length in the lens video. So they may give you the information you need in the form of lens power instead of focal length. So this is a, a similar question then. What's the magnification of a telescope with an objective lens of power 0.2 diopter and an eyepiece lens of focal length 2 centimetres? So it's a mixture of the two types of information there. Again, pause it and see you can have a go. Careful for little tricks that I might have tried to throw in there to catch you out. Okay, so first thing we need to do is we need to convert um, the power in diopter that we've been given for the objective lens, okay, and turn it into a focal length. So again, we do 1 divided by the focal length in meters, sorry, 1 divided by the power in diopters even will give us the focal length in meters, so 5 meters. And the thing you have to be careful about here is that I've given you the focal length of the eyepiece in centimeters. Whenever you put focal lengths into this magnification equation, they must be in the same units, otherwise it will not work. So if one focal length is in meters, the other one must be in meters also. Okay, so magnification here is 5 divided by 0 0.02, which is 250. Okay, so make sure you put your focal lengths in the same units. Okay, so that's doing the calculations. The last thing we need to deal with is why um, we use mirrors instead of lenses for most telescopes. And the reason is there are problems with lenses. The first of which is this. If you think back to the refraction video, we talked about the fact that, generally speaking, sort of um, violet light will be refracted more than red light in prisms. And basically, the lens has the same problems the prism would do, uh, except we want to refract the different colours in different directions of the prism. But if you think about what happens here, we're going to place our detector, um, say it's our eye or a um, piece of film or a CCD camera, after the lens and we want to form our image. The problem we've got with um, with this um, particular issue, which is fancy name for which is chromatic aberration. Chromatic is referring to the colour, and aberration just means something that doesn't work as it should do, is 
that we basically can't focus all the colours in the image at the same time. We can have purple in focus by putting the uh, the thing we're using to detect the image at the purple focus, or red in focus by using the uh, using the red focus. And any, all the other colours are obviously in between. They're not shown here just for clarity. So that's a problem with lenses. That doesn't happen with mirrors because mirrors work on reflection and it doesn't matter what colour of light you have, the law of reflection is always the same. The angle of incidence equals the angle of reflection. So uh, mirrors can completely remove this problem. The other problem we have is something called spherical aberration which is where you try to make a lens um, the perfect surface shape for the lens is not spherical. When you try to make lenses they tend to come out spherical. It's quite hard to stop them being spherical. Um, so when you do that you end up with a situation where actually the outer part of the lens has a slightly shorter focal length than the inner part of the lens and you can see that illustrated in this diagram. And again you get the same problems. You, you, you have a slightly sort of blurred image. The outer part of the image can be in focus or the inner part of the image can be in focus but not both. Now there are ways to correct that by spending enough money on your lens or using multiple lenses, but again it gets to be expensive. The other thing that happens with lenses is you're travelling through a material, the light's moving through a material, so absorption can happen. Um, and we don't necessarily want absorption to happen because it can mess up um, data on our spectra. Remember we use the spectra of stars, that's the distribution of light um, from the star. Um, to make judgments about the composition of the star, what elements are in it, and also things like measuring redshift. If some of the light has been absorbed in the lens, that can affect those measurements, so that, that is quite important. Again, for the mirror, the light is simply reflected off the mirror. It's much easier to control um, what's going on there. And the main thing is the cost. Okay, Making a mirror only requires you to make one single surface, which is easier than making the two surfaces highly engineered that you need for the lens. Uh, and again, sort of related to the absorption point, um, if you want to make your lens really good, you'd need a quite high purity material, which is difficult to do. And these problems kind of get worse the bigger you want to make the lenses. And as we're going to see when we look at the diffraction um, video, um, you need to make your lenses as big as, poss as possible, really, or your collecting area for your telescope as big as possible for more than one reason, in fact. Okay? So those are the problems with the lenses, most of which are solved completely or partly by using a mirror. So you need to understand how the mirror does the same job as the lens. Okay, so just for reference, in the top right here we've got the, the diagram, simplified diagram for the convex lens to remind you what that looked like. I'm going to show you how this concave mirror, right, which is so it curves inwards, um, does the same job. I've labelled here a principal axis again and this time we've got something called the centre of curvature. That's basically just, this, imagine this is a, a, a massive circle this mirror and we've sort of chopped it off then the centre of that circle would be here where we've indicated. Okay, That's going to be important in a sec when we work out where the rays are going to go. So here's the first ray coming in and whenever we reflect off a mirror what we need is a normal, so there is the normal and remember the angle of reflection measured um, from the normal to the reflected ray is equal to the angle of incidence which is measured from the incoming ray or the instant ray to the normal. So you can see that there. So what happens actually is if you look at this is the ray ends up going through the through a point on the principal axis that is halfway between the center of the center of curvature and the mirror surface. So that is actually our focal point for the mirror. And if we draw in a few more rays and their normals and we can see that that happens. And the reason for that is, if you think about it, the normals are going to be pointing towards this centre of curvature. So when the ray reflects, it moves through an angle, one angle to get it to the normal, and that same angle again to get it to where it's going, and that will mean that you end up half the distance from the centre of curvature to the lens is where the focal point is. So there you go, focal point, focal plane again, and focal length measured basically from the front surface of the mirror, really. So that is how a concave mirror does the same job as a convex lens. If you look at the two diagrams, you can see that all that's happened is we've got exactly the same pattern. We've just folded the um, diverted rays back on themselves so that this is focusing on the same side as the light is coming from, whereas the lens focuses on the opposite side. So in terms of functioning, it, it, there's no difference there. We have to do some fancy things for making the telescope, as we'll see in a second. But it does the same job. It takes parallel light and it focuses it to a point. So what we need to do then is to look at the final thing we're going to look at is how we can actually make that into a functional telescope, a telescope that works. 
Okay? And we need to remember as well that the part of the reason we're doing this is that we need to make a large mirror to collect enough radiation from distant or faint objects to form an image. We're going to talk again about the reasons for large mirror in the diffraction video. So here's our actual diagram of the telescope. I've put this hatching in this time to show uh, reflective surfaces. I left it out because we were drawing all the normals in on the previous diagram. But um, conventionally, when you're showing a reflective surface, you just hatch behind it to show it's reflective. So we have here our objective mirror, which was replacing our objective lens. Right? We have this little flat mirror at 45 degrees inside the telescope, um, which basically serves to relay the image out. We often still use an eyepiece lens with a reflecting telescope. We could just use a single curved mirror in here instead of this flat mirror. But um, the eyepiece lens is actually not as expensive or difficult to make because it's a lot smaller than the objective lens would need to be. So again, same thing. Let's show how the rays come in. Here they come off the mirror, off the relay mirror, into the lens, and back parallel again once they've gone through the eyepiece. So it does exactly the same job as the um, telescope does, uh, the, the refracting telescope, which we looked at to start with. Okay. And we've talked about the reasons for those things just there. So that's the reason we use the flat mirror to relay the image. If we didn't use this flat mirror then, and we just put the um, eyepiece lens in line, it would end up blocking the light coming through and into the telescope. Um, and or the astronomer standing in the way would certainly block it out. So this flat mirror is a bit of a compromise. It just um, moves the image to the side so you can see it. You might think that would cause massive problems, but if you think about it, the, the telescope is only looking at some of the light from the object anyway, some of the light from the star. Um, blocking a tiny bit, even in the centre near the principal axis, doesn't actually matter too much for forming the image. Okay, So it seems like it would be a big, big deal but actually in practice it turns out not to matter too much. Okay, so that's telescopes, um, and hopefully that's helped you understand how they work and why we use mirrors rather than lenses in large telescopes in particular.